Hey everybody, so we're outside of Santa Cruz, California on this really cold summer morning and we're here to watch this awesome test. So the folks behind me right now are from So Far Ocean Technology. It's a combination of two companies, awesome uh, ocean robot companies. One is Open ROV, who we've met before. The other is Spoon Drift, who makes the spotter. That's that yellow buoy over there. And their plan right now is to get this buoy and into the ocean and to really gather data in a way that's been unprecedented before. They've been working the past couple weeks for this test to deploy these buoys, not from boats, but from a plane, that plane right there. Now, they don't know how this is going to work. They've been working up mechanisms for deployment, and uh, well, I'm going to let them talk about it, but this is a super exciting day, so we're going to come along with all their journey. Let's check it out. Okay, so with me here is a spotter buoy. This is a device that we've designed which is able to measure weather data and other things about what's going on in the ocean uh, at a very low cost. And we can build tons of them and send them all around the ocean. Uh, one of the challenges we have with these is getting them out into the water itself. We have to take a big ship to get them out into the middle of the sea, or if there's a big storm coming, no one wants to go out there with a boat to, to deploy them. So what we're working on is a way to deploy these from an airplane. The idea is if we can drop these from a plane, you could fly in front of a hurricane and, and get them in front of the hurricane to understand what's going on, uh, or you could deploy them in the open ocean without having to use ship time. It just seems like it would be a really useful idea in general. So the job I've been tasked with is to design a mechanism that allows us to drop spotter from a plane using a parachute or some other sort of device, uh, and then when it lands and hits the water, that mechanism deploys away from the spotter and it's left to drift freely in the ocean. The design I've come up with is basically, I kind of call it like a salad bowl. It's just this bowl-shaped uh, thing, and inside of it is this special mechanism that uses a bobbin from an automatically inflating life jacket. So the way these bobbins work is there's this salt material, and when it hits water, that salt material dissolves, and this inner diameter of the bobbin opens up. That'll allow this metal pin, which is pulled by the spring, to retract, and that retracting pin is going to be holding some strings that come around the bowl uh, and go around to the top of the buoy where the parachute is attached. So today I'm going to be attaching those strings to this bowl and uh, making sure that everything fits right. And then a little bit later on we can go to our test tank and see if the release mechanism works properly. Okay, so I've told you about the first design, which I think is pretty straightforward and honestly I, I have pretty good faith that it's going to work. The second design that we're going to try dropping is a little bit more radical. It's something I thought of that would really help us with keeping things low cost, making them uh, very biodegradable, um, and I just think it's super cool. We're calling this the cardboard box design. Basically, this is the exact same box that we would ship Spotter in when we're shipping it to some place in the world, but we've designed the box in a way that it can also act as the descent mechanism. This is the outer shipper. Um, this protects the box as it's being shipped away, and it's kind of like a remove before flight box. Uh, you pull this off once you get the package, and then it's ready to be dropped from the airplane. The box is like a normal one, except for that the flaps are a little bit longer than you'd normally expect. And the idea is, uh, when the box is falling, they'll open out and act kind of like a shuttlecock. They'll create more drag, and that will cause this to move slowly enough that it hits the water at an acceptable speed. The challenge is, if there were some sort of strap or something that had to hold these open when it was falling, the shear, when we drop it out of the plane going at 100 miles an hour, it would probably rip the fins off. So we came up with a new design, which uh, lets this slow down before the shuttlecock wings open up. And the way that works is that um, it's initially closed, and when it hits the air, these will, from drag force, spring back, and they'll go straight back. But there's this slit that goes along the side of it, and that causes an asymmetry which uh, makes the whole box spin. And the hope is that that spinning motion will create centrifugal force that causes these to slowly open up after it's already decelerated, um, and uh, hopefully that'll allow the whole thing to slow down uh, enough uh, before it hits the water. Inside of the box is our spotter. Once it hits the water, this box will start to sink, this part will float away, and then spotter should be released. I'm definitely not sure this will work. Probably something will break. I'm just not sure what, and that's what we'll be testing. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is try to rig up this uh, parachute release mechanism uh, with the lines that are needed, um, and then we're gonna be able to go test it. So um, basically we just need to build the lines that go around spotter, attach them to the mechanism, and see what happens next.
Yeah, looks pretty good. Okay, so this is our uh, test of the release mechanism. What should happen is when I put this in the water, the bobbin is gonna dissolve and allow this metal pin to retract. These red strings, there's three sets of them, are going to uh, be released from that, which will allow this parachute to come off the top. Uh, the ring will be detached. Meanwhile, this bowl, now that it's not attached to the strings, will fall down and the chain will be released. So, uh, guess we'll see if it works. Okay, here we go. Okay, deploying in three, two, one. And by now the bobbin should have retracted. If there was some tension, let's see if those strings would be released. They're not. Um, what I'm thinking is maybe what's happening, which I haven't tested before, is there's an air bubble um, around where the bobbin is, and so the water's not dissolving the salt fast enough. Um, at this point, I think what I'll do is I'll pull it out and then see if I can take it back to the lab. Oh. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> You guys nervous? I'm nervous. Just kidding, not that nervous. All right, so this is round two. Uh, last time we noticed that the waterproof, or the water release bobbin uh, did not work, um, and I think that's because it was trapped in an air bubble. So now we've drilled holes in the top of the bowl, uh, which should help flood that area and allow it to get wet faster so it will release quicker. But only the testing will tell us if that actually worked. So here we go. Three, two, one. The bowl flooding. All right. <laughs> I think that made the difference. <laughs> Woo! Testing completed in the lab, it was time to take these buoys out into the field, or more specifically, into the air. The plane was loaded up and the team headed out onto the water to await the airdrops. We are just outside of Moss Landing in Monterey Bay. Going out with chasing Eric and Tim on the rib. Getting ready to watch some buoys fall out of airplanes. We, uh, we heard from them that the, the plane would rather have a higher ceiling, preferably blue sky, so um, they're standing by as we wait for the weather to clear. After a short wait, we heard it. The plane was coming. We saw it approach from the distance, and everyone braced for the drops. Out the bowl. Good. So that was awesome, truly thrilling. From our perspective on the beach, watching those buoys deploy from that plane. But it is a couple weeks later, and now we're about to check in with the SOFAR team again to see from their perspective, was that test a success? Let's go check it out. Okay, Eric, so that was super fun to watch. <laughs> I can't even imagine what it was like for you guys on the boat, watching the buoys come down. But now that you have time to review the footage, was it a success? I would call it a success. Um, we learned a lot from it. I mean, I was kind of sad that it was so overcast that day. You know, we had the ceiling that didn't allow the plane to get quite as high as we wanted. So for the box test, we weren't really able to draw a strong conclusion. You know, it seemed like that first box as it fell out of the plane started to spin up, the wings mm -hmm. were starting to come out. But before we had a chance for it to stabilize, it just hit the water. The parachutes, however, I thought did great. Um, every single test we did looked like a success. Um, you know, the uh, kind of thing that holds the chain on the bottom deployed properly. Um, I'm really excited about the future. And the fact that you could deploy so many so quickly <laughs> from the plane, 
That was just really fun to see. Wasn't that rad? There was this one time we were like, all right, well now we've deployed one at a time, let's try doing them in serial. And we put, I think we threw four out of the plane all at once. And it, it was just so cool to, to watch as like, they just kind of made this dotted line coming from the plane. And um, yeah, I think this really means a lot for how these sorts of instruments can be deployed. We could fly a plane in front of a hurricane and, and dump a bunch of them out and be able to get you know, more weather data, more ocean data than anyone ever has been able to in rapid time. Because that's the idea. These are in the ocean now. Traditionally, you've been having them toss over off of cargo ships and other, other ships, but now the potential is there to deploy them where their ships don't pass. Yeah, you're totally right. And you know, the way we've generally deployed these is we call them ships of opportunity. So if there's some freighter that's going across the Pacific, we'll give them a few and they throw them overboard on their way at strategic points. But there are a lot of areas in the ocean, like the polar regions, the South Pacific, where there just isn't that much boat traffic. Um, so this will allow us to potentially get into these remote spots really effectively. And then also if there's really time critical events, like, like we mentioned a, a coming hurricane and we want to understand how the hurricane's moving and progressing, what the weather conditions below the hurricane are, um, this sort of a system I think will be uh, you know, disruptive for, for that kind of observation. So because of the cost, because of the versatility, and because of how much data you can get and that orders of magnitude greater than previous technologies like this, like what's the dream? What's the end goal for, for Spotter? Well, you know, I mean, it, it's been amazing to me to see how little we know about the ocean. I mean, right now, it's not even like I couldn't give you a forecast of what the ocean is gonna be, you know, somewhere in the middle of the ocean a few days from now. We couldn't even tell you with better than 50% accuracy what the weather is right now. So, you know, that's just the surface, but I think our goal at SOFAR is to understand the ocean better than anyone has. So, with a, a low-cost device like Spotter, um, I hope we're gonna be able to really understand, you know, the rest of the planet in a profound way. Um, you know that movie Twister where they have the little uh, oh, weather yeah. things that they throw out into the into yes. the tornado and that makes the big difference. This is kind of like that, but real life and for the entire ocean. And ocean's a big place. <laughs> it's a big place, and so you need a lot of sensors to do it. But uh, I think I think we're well equipped, especially with this new technology we're developing. It's a, it's a different way to think about robots. You guys have tridents that go underneath the water. You guys have <laughs> bots on the water, and it's super cool. It's got to be it's got to be everything. You know, it's it's not just about um, understanding what wave conditions are. You know, Spotter can do that really well. But as as a company and kind of a group of interested people, we're really trying to make instruments for all aspects. You know, the the deep sea you know, right below the surface, we're looking at what is happening with biological systems, what's happening to the atmosphere, water temperature. Um, there's a huge amount of stuff to study and, you know, you can't do it with just one type of sensor. Um, so, you know, this is definitely just the beginning for us. And you can't do it with one type of testing environment either, in the lab, <laughs> in the field. Thank you so much for taking us on this journey. Can't wait to see what you guys do next. I've been so glad to have you guys here. Thank you very much.